Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Irritate Manager at Danon Poland. Um, I work in Danon for two and a half years. Before Danon, I used to work in digital agencies in Sachi Sachi, K2. K2 is leading Polish digital agency. Before that, I used to work in Carrefour. Carrefour is a retailer, probably you know that. Um, today, I, I will talk a little bit about, uh, about how we perceive and what we basically do in business with our, with our online partners. Uh, I don't have too much time, so I will focus only on the basics, because the basics are the things that we struggle on. I don't mean done on, I mean the whole market. And because of the basics, there are most uh, numbers of fuck-ups and problems. So within the fix fixing the basics, we, have, we can have very um, quick and effective improvement of our business. So, okay. Uh, this agenda, but let's focus on the slides. So first of all, there is no data. All the things that you see about e-commerce, I mean e-grocery in Poland and any other market are estimations. So estimations are not the data, but let's take a look on it. This number is uh, it's in Polish Zlotys, it's billion in Polish Zlotys. If you want Euro, you have to divide it by four. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the worth of Polish retail, half of it is food. Even food is not big online, it is huge offline. So we have to wait until it will be uh, available online. Uh, this number is online retail in Poland, food and non-food both. And this number is uh, online food in 2014. So you see, it's still a peanut. But you know what they say, it's small, but it grow very fast. So let's see how it will grow. In 2019, according to PMR, retail in Poland will be, uh, the, the, the value of retail in Poland will be at uh, more than 700 billion. 42% of it, it will be food. Uh, what will happen with e-commerce? Uh, it will double. What will happen with uh, food online? It will triple, but still, it's a peanut. So the question that you're wondering on is why we are doing this? Um, there are three things about it. First of all, we want to be first. If you are first, we can introduce on the market our, our standards so we can um, build market according to our expectation. Second of all, um, we want to be better, better than ourselves. So we are learning a lot. The cost of learning today is much cheaper than it will be in the future. Danon is a global company, so we have a lot of experiences locally in Poland, but we have a lot of other experiences on other markets, so we share with them. And we, by doing this today, we're going to leave our competitors behind us. Because when they see what we are doing, they will be two steps behind us. They will have no strategy and uh, they will have no implemented strategy as well. So there's one more thing about it. Uh, I'm sure that every, uh, every one of you heard about the Ropo, uh, Ropo uh, effect is research online and purchase offline. So internet influence offline sales. So according to Google, 32% of all offline purchases was influenced by internet. According to Google, only 4% of them converted online. And I know that you know about it, but there's one thing that you don't know probably. Most of the people who are looking for information about the products online, they're looking on, uh, for that information on retailers' website not on the uh, producer and brand websites. So the future place for marketing for brands in F from FMCG category are at retailers website, at retailers shops. Okay, so what the reality looks alike? All of the big companies, all of the big global corporations work in silos. Uh, I know there is a trend in the market, break the silos, work together. But um, the truth is like that, that we're still in silos. So, when it comes to e-commerce, um, there was a question. Two and a half years ago, when I came to Danon, I was standing in front of the question, what to do with e-commerce? Because before me, there was no e-commerce activities. So, it was very tempting to, be, to build another silo, because if I build the silo, no one will know what I'm doing, so I will be unreplaceable, and I will keep my job till the end of my life, yes? So, it was very, very tempting, doing, that like, like that, uh, doing things like that. But, to be honest with you, I did something different. I think about e-commerce in a little bit different way. I think, what I think is much harder to um, build competencies uh, through the rest of the company, digital competencies, and to 
put e-commerce as a coherent element of business system, of business processes. Because mm, the most important things which uh, deliver the target are in the back office uh, I mean, of the big corporations. I mean, in, uh, in areas which are not marketing campaigns. So that's, that's uh, what it's hard to do. This is the, seventh of, uh, the sixth of the seventh ice mountain uh, under the water. So that's what we are doing. So how e-commerce development at producer side can look alike. Uh, in most of the companies, there is no one responsible for it. Um, so the first step for the company is to give someone extra job to do. And that's what is the most common thing that companies do. And probably the key account manager or shopper activation manager has to do, uh, have to do also e-commerce without any budget. So the next step is dedicated headcount. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, the next step is dedicated team for e-commerce, especially for companies from the um, electronic category. And the final step for now is uh, e-commerce is, is in every part of the business. So there are people dedicated in logistic operations department, in controlling team, dedicated purely to e-commerce. So uh, how do we perceive e-commerce? We perceive that as an environment instead of a sales channel. Uh, because on the one side, uh, our marketing doing a lot of digital activities. On the other side, we have great sales team and great distribution in Poland, and we cooperate very closely with the offline retail. Uh, we are category captains, so we also help with building the category for retailers. So what we found out, we have online shops as well, <laughs> and most, most of them are bricks and clicks. It means that they are not, they are not purely online. So by combining all of these elements, we're building environment when we when we starting with our communication and have a whole process and with a conversion. And after, after the conversion, we have also our CRM system so we can convert again. So this example of how we um, matching our traffic with conversion opportunity. This is Activia website. On Activia website, as you can see, there is buy now buttons. There are buy now buttons. If you click on the button, you are redirected to one of the online players to the uh, Activia listing with the products. So the shopper can buy the products. Easy, it, it looks easy, and basically it is easy to do that. Most of the producers don't uh, put that things on their websites. What we did, we also used different technology um, provided by the third party company, is buy now button, which is, a, which is a plugin, which is a JavaScript. And by clicking on this, on this button, you can choose a specific product and go to the shop uh, to the product page of this product to buy it. And probably you feel, you, you're wondering which solution is better, to link to the listing or link to the product. Uh, I know, but I can't tell you, unfortunately. But what I would uh, <laughs> recommend is to try both. So we'll see. Um, so basically, where we at as a market, not as a Danone, because uh, I know where we, are, we, where we are as a Danone, but I was thinking a little bit more about the market. We are at the basics, uh, at the basics level. Remember, this is grocery. Uh, grocery is not very developed category, but it's huge offline, and it's digitalizing more and more every year. So the basics for the producer are uh, the, the, the product content, is the listings, uh, out of stocks, activations, and data and category growth. So let's take a look on them. So the first thing about product content is to take responsibility. Uh, producer is responsible for the product content. Um, in most of the shops, there is a huge mess with product content, a lot, and most of the producer says, okay, guys, do something with that content. But in um, grocery retail, uh, the, the average uh, hypermarket in offline uh, world has like 40,000 products, 80,000 products. It's a lot. The average... Um, FMCG producer has between 100 and 200 SKUs. So it's much easier for a producer to, um, to handle the, 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 the content issue and to provide proper content to the uh, retailer instead of whining about it. So that's the first thing. The second thing, it's a very funny thing, but really it solves many, many problems. Put EAN codes 
in the Packshot file name. It really helps. Because EAN code is a, is a, is a, is a data through which um, um, it, IT system match the products. So it really helps uh, to put the proper, proper, proper photo into the proper place. And in the long run, you need solution, uh, internal solution uh, for uh, managing product content. Without that, there will be a huge mess uh, in the future. And you need a dedicated, a dedicated man for that inside the company. So the more business is digitalizing, the more content becoming important and crucial. So the, uh, this example of the content, uh, this activation of, of one of the producers, they uh, produce coffee. It's like here, here is the banner and this is the product offer. After clicking the banner, you are redirected to the product listing without any landing page, without any selling story, without anything. Cost of this coffee is 50 zlotys, it's 12 and a half euro, and that's a lot. On Polish market, it's very expensive coffee. So I'm a shopper, I clicked, I would like to know a little bit more about the coffee when I buy it. Uh, I click again, no product description at all. So probably I, don't, I won't buy it. But producers spend a lot of money for, for promotion. So what we do? We have a great content. This Danonki Pierwsze Serek, it's a, a homo homogenized cheese for little fellows. It was launching this product uh, last year. We, uh, we put, um, yeah, a hell of a content into the brand bank. We have the Tesco, we have dedicated product cards in one of our clients, which is a pure player. We have also uh, content in Alma. So uh, content for us is very, very important. Um, what about the listings? Uh, if you list the product, then you can sell, sell it. That's, that's easy, yeah? But mm, very often, e-commerce departments and retailers don't cooperate closely with the offline uh, buying teams. So the online team, not always aware of that, that they have new, a new product, and sometimes they have to manually enable that product in the e-commerce system. So letting know e-commerce team that you uh, list a new product, can put it on a listing. That's, that's, that's uh, maybe easy thing because you have to send one mail or ask your key account manager to send one mail. But without that, you can have a problem. Um, to list the product, you need to deliver a proper data about the product. You need to deliver uh, uh, content uh, like product name, uh, product description, uh, pack shot. Without that, there is no listing online. So without content, you have no listing. Without listing, you don't sell. That's, that's, that's easy, yeah? But most of the, most of the companies have problems with that still. <laughs> um, out of stocks, especially in a fresh category, there's always problems with out of stocks. Um, so first of all, I work a lot with our field team, yes? So um, that's, that's, that's because we use a tool delivered by third party company which measure our online KPI. So one of the online KPI is product availabil availability. It means that if the, the product is not available online and this brick and click store, it means also that the product is unavailable offline. So we know when the product offline is unavailable because of the online KPIs. And our field team work with that. Uh, also, a good solution is to um, set a leaf for rule. It's a logistic rule for the online online uh, pure players because uh, they don't have offline shop uh, where they can sell the product with short date. Okay, about activations, it's a long, long, long story. There are many, many ideas how to how to uh, combine them. But um, the first rule is always ask, always ask about the sales and web statistics data after activation. Without that, same as offline, you don't know what actually works or, no, or don't, yes? And because this is an online shop, they have all of the data, most often. And the second thing, in online business, you have much more place to spread your marketing communication. Because this, this example of offline, offline uh, promo for Activia, on post materials, there's only uh, only a bottle, some lady, and uh, maybe one sentence. In online, we put also feature and benefits of the product, and it works uh, really good. 
So, like I said at the beginning, we're trying to uh, develop our knowledge um, and we do it together with our clients. So, uh, in 2013, we did an uh, online service uh, to, um, to know so something more about the motivators and barriers for dairy category online. Uh, partly, these this services were made with our online partners, so they sent link to questionnaire to their shoppers. So for those who did it, we share with them the, the report after service. And after that, we had the meetings, we, uh, did, we, we created some plan to address the purchase barriers behind, the, behind this category. So like I said, uh, there are also purchase, uh, purchase barriers. Uh, there are for uh, particular SKUs, for category, for brands, for, uh, for some shops. And um, sometimes those are, there are very simple and easy actions which can uh, break them. So one of the barriers for dairy online is, um, is that, that people don't know that delivery vans has coolers inside. So only by saying that they have coolers inside and a couple of more things, uh, we increased um, the dynamic growth of, in one of our uh, customers uh, two times. So putting it into other words, uh, only with marketing communication without saying anything about the price, without any price cut, with any other investment. Only investment that, that we did was creating the banners because we created the banners for, the, for our partner without our logo. It was like uh, communication of the online shop. We increased sales of all category. So we work very closely. Um, there are also, there are also um, solutions for developing the, the, the whole category. This, this is what we uh, see online. This example of in Tesco, there's um, some content about the healthy living, about eating green stuff because it's healthy. Uh, next to this uh, article, there are recipes. And next to the recipe is the buy now button. And you can, with one click, add all of the products to the basket. So we build, the, we build the need through the shopper and we give them solution. So basically, what we have uh, in Poland, we have a CRM system, which is based on an algorithm and engine, which recommends the best recipes for you according to your preferences. So there's only one step. Uh, next is to add buy now button there. So stay tuned. And basically, this is, a, this is a summary of what I said. And, and remember, this presentation is not very fancy presentation with fireworks. Uh, there are not very nice slides, but those things actually work. You can use them from tomorrow to improve your online business. And it works, really. Because not slides make a business, but real actions <laughs> is what, what, what they uh, uh, make a business. Um, so um, I was also thinking about um, will online grocery develop and cooperation between producers in general and online groceries improve in a short period of time. And what I think, not too soon. Why? There is a pattern how new things are implemented into big companies. So first of all, there's a new thing, new idea on the market. Then some company, probably agency, making a, a service about, they, about it. And most of these kinds of services are not very, not, not very good. Then there's first case made by a company, but there's never a company that you actually work in uh, at the time. It's always someone else doing it. You know, the grass is greener outside. <laughs> uh, then you have uh, some uh, arguments to make them that test in your company. Then you roll out it. And finally, you are um, expecting success or learning. And basically, if it's a learning, you probably um, try to forget about it. So, to be innovative, we need to uh, forget about the second and the third step. So if the, there's, a, there's a new thing on the market, uh, I think we have to jump on it as soon as we can. And so that's, that's what we do in Danone. So that's why we are where we are at, uh, at this point. And um, there's the last slide. And I was looking for a benchmark for a Polish market. So which market we should benchmark uh, to, uh, to try to predict where the grocery in Poland will go. 
I truly believe that we are very similar to the British market because uh, most of uh, Polish grocery market is home delivery logistics. Yes, and I didn't have uh, time today to, to show you the exact features and reasons why we are very similar to the, to the British market, but in general we are. So even though there are some, um, some rumors on the market that one of the huge chains in Poland will open uh, pickup points with coolers, I still believe that the, the, the dom dominating uh, type of e-commerce, model of e-commerce in Poland, I mean e-grocery, will be delivery. Uh, basket penetration of water in e-grocery in Poland is, let's say, at 90%. So everybody order water through uh, online, online shops. And it's not one bottle. It's many, many of them. So um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you like this presentation. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so if there are any questions, I can Yes, answer. yes. Uh, so are there any questions from the audience? And please introduce yourself very briefly. Uh, hello, my name is Christina. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your marketing uh, activities. Uh, have you tried email marketing automation for the grocery? And if yes, which emails have you tried to send? Uh, okay, that's a good question. No, we didn't try marketing automation with our grocery partners, but basically that's the future. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we, we're doing a little bit uh, of uh, automation our, of our e-commerce activities, but that's purely marketing and CRM. Yes. Yeah? So okay. the next step that we are uh, going to do probably will be trying to do something with uh, our online partners, but I, can, I can't tell you when and what. <laughs> okay, see, and the surveys. You were talking about the surveys, and uh, you were uh, asking people to uh, complete the survey on a website or send it through email. Um, the day purchase. In yes, yes. Yeah. In Poland, there are five top clients. Two of them agreed to take part with us on the service, so they sent link to the service, the questionnaire, to day shoppers through mail for those who didn't agree, we did it on internet panel. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you.